educate, be persistent, be present. And when you hear the no, because you will hear the no, go back and think about it. Don't, because you know what happens sometimes when we hear no? We all shut down. We get really angry. We get really upset. We then think, oh, well, that person is horrible. How can they not see what I see? Well, guess what? They Maybe their whole life experience is such that they can't see what you see at this time. And so maybe you need to figure out what is it that you can bring back to the table that will help them understand? Or who is it that you can bring to the table that will speak it in language that they can hear so that they can then understand rather than walking away angry? And I think that's important. And so part of that being persistent, being present, is also listening. And listening with an active mind, I think, is really important. Now, I live in a district where there's often um, a lot of homicide victims. That is, unfortunately, we have incidents where kids, um, very young people, are involved in gang violence, and they sometimes harm themselves. And um, as a result of that, we had a lot of parents, particularly women, and I go back to women because at the crux of most of what I've done, I found that there is a woman who've gotten very active, very engaged, and very involved and decided that it had to stop. And I came to meet a woman named Tina Sherry, and her son had been killed. And when her son was killed, instead of turning to bitterness and anger, she mobilized all of that was within her to create a peace curriculum for the schools here in Boston. And now that peace curriculum has been adopted nationally. And what she said to me, she came to me, she said, you're my state rep, and I want you to create a day in Massachusetts for survivors of homicide victims. I looked at her, I said, well, who are survivors of homicide victims? She said, it's me. It's people like me. She said, everybody forgets about us. She says, you know, after we get the dead, we are left with a lot of problems and nobody think about the problems that we face. And again, I was a former prosecutor and we had advocates, we had all sorts of people who helped victims. And for us, the victims were the ones who actually were impacted by the criminal activity. And so you stole my purse and I'm the one who's the injured party now. You never think about the family member being the, um, the victim. And they call themselves survivors of homicide. And with that, she created this group. We worked together. I started finding myself in contact more and more with women who had lost, whether it be a child, a brother, a sister, a husband, uh, a wife, uh, folks who've lost different people. And they said, we want this to happen. And again, they created a movement. It was through communication, through education, through being present. Because one of the things that I think um, the, what you call civil society, civil society who we as government must respond to. And civil society must see the place of government as their place, as their place. So they have to be able to walk into the state house because it's their house so that they can say, this is what we need, not what you think we need. This is what we need. And it doesn't always happen quickly, but they have to, per they have to really be persistent. And if they're persistent and continue to come, and try to find different ways of getting the message across, eventually somebody will hear. And with that, actually, we did create the Survivors of Homicide Victims Week here in Massachusetts. And what that is, every year, from November 20th to December 20th, we have a week where there are activities throughout the state that really recognizes the needs and concerns of survivors of homicide victims.